All right, let's go. So family, today, before I even get started, I wanna make sure that I give tribute to the queen of uh, England. The proper respect goes out to her for all the wonderful things that people said she did. And as a foundation of Black American, uh, there are sometimes there's people with a much stronger voice, much stronger passion that can give tribute and honor to the Queen of England, um, the old white lady, the old white lady that just died. So instead of me giving tribute and honor to the Queen of England, I'm gonna let another brother do it for me. I think he can convey my feelings, my emotions, and how I think about this better than now. So I'll let him take the helm on this one. I'll let him take the lead. Um, but essentially, I feel the same way. Okay. So I'll let you enjoy this. I know you Uncle Toms hate this, but this is real talk. Now, do we see the white Jews of Germany crying and mourning when Hitler died? Why must a Negro cry if one of his slave or colonial masters dies? The bloody British Empire has the blood of at least 100 million Blacks murdered by the British crown since 1650. The transatlantic slave trade, that's your queen. The Queen of England troops illegally invaded South Africa, Nigeria, Ghana, and Kenya. And by 1905, they have bombed, burned, wiped out scores of Zulu, Igbo, Ashanti, Bushmen, and Khoikhoi and the like. Between the years of 1900 and 1960, the so-called Queen of England and her crown pilfered and stole African gold, oil, diamond, and precious metals worth $10 trillion while we're poor today. The red carpet, that's the royal red carpet walking on the drenched blood of our ancestors. God damn this so-called queen. So you handkerchief head stool pigeon Uncle Toms, be quiet. Because the witch didn't die hard enough. How about going to her grave and dig up her grave and shooting her goddamn grave because she didn't die hard enough and strong <laughs> enough? Uh, definitely that brother did it better than I could. Uh, shout out goes out to that brother for that most powerful and very impactful little segment there. Um, I cannot agree with him more. But I have bigger fish to fry. And I don't mean like sea bass or trout. Um, <laughs> but I had bigger fish. I, I don't really give any recognition to what occurred into another country, let alone uh, for a monarchy and matriarch that essentially colonized the entire world. For instance, let's just take uh, a bit of truth in history that America is essentially a colony of England. Don't forget the ancestors of the Europeans who came over here and killed, pillaged, stole, and all the other atrocities. They are descendants from Europe. So let's just get that straight. And our very declarations of independence, our Bill of Rights, our Constitution are from those people. So when we go through these amendments, family, we will understand how this was written. Because a lot of um, a lot of Black Americans believe that the Constitution kind of engulfs us. Um, to a very small extent, do, do not forget that we were still in slavery when the uh, Constitution was written back in the 1780s, okay, 1786, 19, 1787, I think between 87 and 88, the Constitution was ratified. I mean, it was actually brought into law that people essentially had to start following. Guess what, family? We were still enslaved up until 1865. So let's keep let's keep that in mind. Just like any other time family, I love to bring reverence to this by giving it a definition. The basic principles and laws of a nation state. This is the definition of a constitution. The basic principles and laws of a nation state or social group that determine the powers and duties of the government and guarantee certain rights to the people in it. OK, certain rights to the people in it. That's what a constitution was made for. So we're going to get right to the nitty gritty here, okay? We're gonna get right to the nitty gritty. We're gonna go over the constitution. And I'm gonna break down which each of these amendments actually mean, okay? And I think that's very important. So the first amendment lays out five basic freedoms, the freedom of religion, the freedom of speech, the freedom of the press, the freedom of the assembly, okay? And freedom to petition the government. That's when people 
goes and march on Washington in protest. Now, these rights were important to establish because they ensured that individuals could think, speak, and act without fear of being punished for disagreeing with the government. You know that did not occur because when Donald Trump was in office and many other presidents were in office, when black folk rose up and marched on Washington, they used the National Guard and also active duty troops to keep black people in place. But they said it was to protect uh, the property and people around it for safety. And we know that Antifa played a major role, if not all, in the destruction of public property and people businesses, not black Americans, not U.S. freedmen, not foundational black Americans. OK, now, in addition to being arguably one of the most important amendments, talking about the First Amendment, it is still very much at the center of American political discourse today. I mean, from questioning whether or not Twitter bots had the First Amendment rights to whether or not the White House has been a CNN reporter violates the Constitution. OK, let's move on. Let's move on. We're going to talk about this Second Amendment, which a lot of people in this country absolutely love. The Second Amendment family supports the right to own guns okay firearms though it's been hotly debated uh whether the constitution frames only in mind that the militia use of guns or if any citizen had a constitutional right to a firearm and today i've talked about this before this confusion is largely due to the four commas in the amendment that are grammatically confusing let me tell you why now it has since become one of the most politicized amendments, especially back in 2008. The Supreme Court ruled five to four that the U.S. citizens have a constitutional right to keep a loaded handgun at home for self-defense. That's what the Supreme Court said. OK, and I believe it was Antonio Salidia who wrote the majority decision and they laid out a number of provisions. And those provisions say that nothing in our opinion should be taken to cast doubt on long-standing prohibitions on the possession of firearms by felons and the mentally ill or laws forbidding the occurring of firearms in sensitive places such as schools and government buildings or laws imposing conditions and qualifications of the commercial sale of arms, okay? Now let's move on to the third. We're getting through these amendments, family, so we can map out how these were never essentially made for black Americans because the third amendment prohibits the government from forcing citizens to give lodging to soldiers in their homes without permission. Now, we have to understand before the Revolutionary War, Americans were required to give food and lodging to British soldiers as part of the 1765 Quartering Act. But according to the National Constitution Center, the Third Amendment is the least litigated in the Bill of Rights and the Supreme Court has never decided a case based on it. So we're just going to leave that one where it lies and we're going to move on to the fourth. Now, the Fourth Amendment prevents the government or police from searching or seizing the homes, belongings, or bodies of citizens without probable cause or warrant. Now, family, we know that this particular amendment gets violated by local, state, and law enforcement agents on the federal level to black Americans daily. Ever since this constitution was essentially created and made, that this was violated by local, state, and federal law enforcement agents around the country. I can show you many examples, but we'll be here all damn day of all the atrocities and violations of the constitution that police impose on black Americans each and every day okay yeah we're, we're going into it today family because i think a lot of times people are always talking about the constitution 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 it's a constitutional right it's a constitutional law and i'm looking at people that look like me i'm looking at people that have my same lineage and think the damn constitution was made for them no the people that look like you were still in chains it was not created and written for you or for us, rather. That doesn't mean we still can't hold their feet to the fire. Let me continue here because it's very important that we know our rights. OK, because we have to understand one of the most significant impacts of the Fourth Amendment was in the case of Weeks versus United States 
back way back in uh 1914 1913 when the supreme court decided that evidence taken in violation of the fourth amendment could not be used in court what is called the exclusionary rule okay hopefully you guys are familiar with that let's move to the fifth amendment okay now the fifth amendment gives people accused of crimes a variety of rights and protections okay as you guys are reading the amendment i'm going to break down what these things mean okay the fifth amendment for those people who are accused of crimes, a variety of different crimes, gives you rights and protections, including the right to a grand jury indictment for felony offenses in federal court, the restriction on double jeopardy. That means being put on trial for the same crime after being found not guilty. You cannot do that. You, they cannot try you again. Protection against forced self-incrimination. You cannot incriminate yourself this is the guarantee of due process of law and the prevention of the government taking private property for public use without proper conversation. I mean, the most significant Supreme Court decision relating to the Fifth Amendment outside of the criminal trials, according to the National Constitution Center, was Miranda versus Arizona back in the 60s, where the Supreme Court decided that the police must give criminal suspects a set of warnings before they can be questioned this is called their miranda rights i know you guys heard that before these rights are in direct relation to the self-incrimination clause of the fifth amendment meaning that i plead the fifth meaning you cannot indict yourself okay they must read you your rights first okay the sixth amendment the sixth amendment guarantees people accused of a crime receive fair inaccurate criminal proceedings can i say that again fair inaccurate criminal proceedings including the right to a speedy public trial by a jury from the area where the crime was committed the right to confront and question witnesses against the accused the right to a subpoena witness and have them testify at trial and the right to a lawyer What's most important about this one, family? What's most important? That this should be a trial by your peers. It says that assures the right to a speedy trial by one of the juries of one's peers. So born and raised in Washington, D.C., I've seen many of our black brothers and sisters get put on trial and the whole entire jury is white. They don't live in those areas where they should be putting jury from. That's because the prosecutors have uh they have this um pre-trial essentially where they pick out certain juries and for some strange reason as i was growing up and even today in a predominantly black neighborhood and community majority of the jurors are white they're not part of that community they're not even part of the vicinity where the crimes were committed so to speak i i you know this i know this okay let me continue okay let me continue this is very important because we're going to move on to the Seventh Amendment, which you should know as well, because the Seventh Amendment promised the right to a jury trial for civil cases that involve property worth more than $20. Even though criminal cases that go to trial always have juries, civil cases really do. And I can break down to the National Constitution Center, but we're not going to even go there because this one is really a no-brainer. Now, the Eighth Amendment. The Eighth Amendment prevents the federal government from imposing excessive bail and inflicting cruel or unusual punishment on criminal defendants. You know and I know that these constitutional rights for black people do not exist. These rights that are supposed to be imposed either be on a federal state or local level have never been our freedom within the constitution to impose our rights so when i see <laughs> from the lineage of black americans from the 1500s stating that they have rights under the constitution yeah you may have some rights they do not allow you to exercise your rights under the constitution and if so prove me wrong yeah 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 you can you can um kind of point out very anecdotal situations once in the Tuesday but as a conglomerate as a aggregate of all the cases and all the 
injustices that you've seen on TV, locally, at your home, whatever the case may be, you know that we don't have these rights. And this stems back from the 1700s when they first wrote the Constitution. Do not forget, your lineage, your people, U.S. Freemen, Foundation of Black Americans, Black Americans, whatever you want to consider yourself, you understand that your people were still enslaved. That's the truth, okay? Let me move on. Let me move on. And, and just for shits and giggles, I'll break down the ninth amendment which i really didn't highlight here because the ninth amendment essentially just clarifies that even though the u.s constitution and the bill of right name certain rights that doesn't mean that people don't have other rights not specifically included in the constitution and i'll just move right on to the 10th okay i'll move right on to the 10th because we need to understand what the 10th means the tiff amendment leaves any powers not specifically assigned to federal government to each state or to the people this amendment protects against the possibility of the national government assuming powers that have not already been assigned to it and it is greatly important to keep the federal government limited as the u.s constitutional frames intended uh-huh uh -huh. And we're going to move right down to one of the most important, okay, one of the most important amendments, which we understand, okay, is the 13th Amendment. So for this one, I'm going to move over here and I'm going to read the Declaration of Independence that it says, we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life liberty and the pursuit of happiness are, are we reading this family that among these are life liberty freedom and the pursuit of happiness now this information is from our cause.gov which is a federal website so you can go research this for yourself this is the declaration of independence this is the freedom as an american that you have well let me continue because when it comes to let me get the 13th amendment over here the 13th amendment it states here neither slavery nor involuntary servitude okay same thing except as a punishment for crime whereof the party should have been duly convicted shall exist within the united states or any place subject to their jurisdiction. What's the most important part of this? Neither slavery nor involuntary servitude, except, 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 because the 13th Amendment passed by Congress on January 31st, 1865, okay? Okay, 1865, 1865 is a very relevant and important year, right? Because this is the year essentially that slavery was abolished, but yet again, this amendment, the 13th, allows slavery. Okay? It allows slavery. Even it, It's kind of like a contradiction that they put into the Constitution because they say, yeah, neither slavery nor involuntary servitude except, except as a punishment for a crime whereof the party should have been duly convicted. Now, family, you know. Who are the most wrongly convicted people in America? We have all of these freedom foundations that are going back to a lot of these cold cases. They're going back to these cases where uh, black men for the last 20 and 30 years have been stating their freedom, have been uh, uh, trying to get retrials and look over the evidence, um, you know, look at the DNA that's on file, uh, uh, re-examine the evidence. They've been trying and a lot. Who's been getting out more so than any other group? Black Americans, because we have been wrongly incarcerated for hundreds of years, not just in the past 60 to 70 years. That's why you see all these free black men get free after um, 10, 20, 30, even 40 years up in jail, wrongfully convicted. Because they understand that slavery still exists in America. And why do you think the whole school to prison pipeline even exists? Let's get these fools enslaved when they're teens adolescents even before they have reached the adulthood of 21 years of age 
but we walking around here stating that we free. And when people on a community level talk about we are free, we have these rights, that slavery no longer exists, that's a damn lie because according to your rights under the Constitution, and that's why I believe that the Constitution, okay, is a flawed documentation of human dignity and rights that it should be changed, it should be modified, it should be reworded, that these men wasn't perfect because again, at the time that they wrote this, guess who was enslaved? That's right, Foundational Black Americans. So again, this wasn't written for us. And when they released us, quote unquote, <laughs> from slavery, our ancestors, they still put slavery back in the Constitution. So much for the founding fathers. So much for the founding fathers. But let me not make waste here, okay? Let me further break this down. Now, abolish slavery and uh and superseded a part of what they call article 4 section 2 of the constitution which set out that fugitive slaves be returned to their owners now your boy who a lot of people in the black community i don't know why praises president abraham lincoln emancipation proclamation was was issued on january 1st of 1863 only free slaves from the confederate states that had succeeded the 13th Amendment was able to free all slaves indentured servants throughout the country, but it did not, however, grant Black Americans the right to vote. You will still not consider a citizen. You still wasn't considered a citizen. These are the rights as you know them, family. These are your so-called constitutional rights. And just trying to give the 13th Amendment some context here. Let's look at the definition of slavery. It says slavery, condition in which one human being was owned by another. A slave was considered by law as property or chattel and was deprived of most of the rights ordinary held by free persons. So that means that when our fellow brothers and sisters in the black community get incarcerated in the United States of America, they are considered a slave and they are property of the state, the local jurisdiction or the federal government in which they have been incarcerated under. They are property because the word slave is very plain. It's always been the same that when you are a slave, you are a piece of property. So when we look at the rights under the constitution, and I forgot the exact number, but it was talking about human rights, having dignity, life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness, and all these good things that you should not be treated cruel. But the exception of the rule of not being treated cruel is that when you are enslaved, when you are in the prison system, that you are a slave, and under being a slave, that you are property of the state and or the entity or jurisdiction in which you are imprisoned in. Are we understanding the constitution? Are we understanding the amendments and the rights that you thought you have, but have never been displayed upon you? Whether you have been pulled over by the police for a broken tail light, or you was DWB driving while black. And they trumped off some bullshit charges, told you to get out your car, jacked you up, put your hands across your back and Hopefully, a lot of us, which we know haven't, especially in the new age of cell phones and videography, that we've seen a lot of these atrocities being shown on all these social media platforms, family. See, at first, we just heard these stories locally, and we really didn't have any evidence to display the egregious treatment of our people. Am I anti-government? No. I'm anti-bad government. Am I anti-police? No, I'm anti-bad police. Let me tell you something else. Who do we consider good police? Who do we consider good police? Because let me tell you this. If a bunch of race soldiers are breaking someone's constitutional 
right, so to speak, or they know the law and other policemen stand around, are those good police that are allowing other police to harm, hurt, and kill innocent people for those who have not yet been convicted of a crime? OK, because when a police usually comes and, and, and tries to um, uh, so-called investigate, you are suspected of a crime until you have been convicted. Policemen do not convict you of a crime. The court of law does. You have to go before a judge and a jury of your peers to be convicted of a crime. So why is it that? What we have seen that some of these police have been the judge, the jury, and the executioner. Right here in these United States. Which really sparked that last part was I saw a guy with a Texas flag and a Blue Lives Matter flag rolling. I was like, see, every time that black people, we protest, we rise up, we come to the government, under the constitution that we can petition the government of being rightfully, uh, uh, um, excuse me, unrightfully executed in the streets, then those people who side with the government, those people who side with the execution of innocent black people, they protest our protest by doing Blue Lives Matter. See, if you know anything about history, if you've been a, a, a woke, so to speak, for the last 30 years, then you will understand that black people generally are not anti-police. You know why? We call the fucking police. When there's crimes happening in our neighborhood, I'm talking about black folks. I'm not talking about niggas. I'm talking about black folk. Black folk that get up early in the morning, go out to their job, work, work their ass off to feed their family. That's what I'm talking about. Black folk, not niggas. And niggas come in all colors. That's right. That's right. They come in all colors. That's right. They, 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 there's black niggas. There's white niggas. There's Asian niggas. Yeah. The low part of our society. I call them all the same thing. But we're talking about upstanding black folk. That's what we're talking about. But they still get prosecuted and killed and mistreated by the systems and the government each and every day. See, anti-government is a whole different conversation, family. It's a whole different conversation. And that's what we need to truly understand. Okay? Because guess what? We look at places like Flint, Michigan. We look at places like uh, Jackson, Mississippi. They still have toxic water. But when you look at these predominantly white neighborhoods, they never have issues with water. Let me, let me just show you this very quickly, family, so you guys can see exactly what I'm talking about here. Now, look at this video from Mississippi in Jackson. Would you drink this water? That's the water that's coming out there false in Jackson, Mississippi. So family, I, I hope that you can find some reputable sites, some legitimate sites that you can donate money as I did. So our brothers and sisters in Jackson, Mississippi and Flint and all the other uh, uh, municipalities in, in little counties and cities that our people um, live in so they can get clean drinking water and they can actually wash their asses. We, they, you can't even wash your body with this toxic water. But we keep hearing people talking about if you pay your taxes if you follow the law then the government is in your favor. Is it? Is the government in your favor? Do the people of Jackson, Mississippi do not pay taxes? Is that what we're saying? That's why they're... Okay. Okay, I'm, I'm just... Family. I, I, I'm just trying to be a voice for those who may not have a voice. That's what I'm stating here. And I don't know why Negroes are worried about this shit right here. Why are we worried about this? We have no dog in a fight. The only thing that you can say about this particular person is the atrocities that this whole monarchy <laughs> under the matriarch, under this person 
have done to melanated people around the world. Plain and simple, family. Plain and simple. I don't have, I don't have too much to say. I, I'm just getting tired of the bullshit. I can tell you right now, my wife and I, in the next year, we're going to South Africa. Because out of all the 50-something countries in Africa, this is the only African country which they should name themselves, not just a region, because North, South, East, and West are regions of a landmass, but South Africa wrote this, and this is uh, posted on Marcel, the brother I was definitely um, trying to get this guy to uh, Congress here, but let me go back here, let me go back, and I'm going to let you guys read this for yourself, you can ask and actually reference this on the internet, but I'm just going to read a little bit of this in case you can't see it, so to speak, of what the EFF under um, Julius Malema um, the economic freedom fighters from South Africa actually wrote. It states here, the economic freedom fighters note the death of Elizabeth Alexandria Mary Windsor, the queen of the United Kingdom and the ceremony head of state of several countries that were colonized by the United Kingdom. Elizabeth ascended to the throne in 1952, reigning for 70 years as a head of an institution built up, sustained, and living off a brutal legacy of dehumanization of millions of people across the world. We do not mourn the death of Elizabeth because to us, her death is a reminder of a very tragic period in the country and Africa's history. Britain, under the leadership of the royal family, Britain, under the leadership of the royal family, took over control of this territory that would become South Africa in 1975 and took permanent control of the territory in 1806. From that moment onwards, native people of this land have never known peace, nor had they ever enjoyed the fruits of the riches of this land. Riches which were and still are utilized, riches which were and still are utilized for the enrichment of the British royal family and those who look like them. Very, very powerful from the EFF. Thank you, brothers and sisters from South Africa for posting this. Because this is the stuff that we need to be fighting back against. Okay? So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. I thank Broad John for joining me as well as Brent C. You guys have a great and wonderful Saturday. I'll see you guys on the next one.